So as I think I said last time uh, I was on, uh, the Israeli army has now launched a ground operation in Gaza. It is doing it very uh, cautiously, systematically. It's, it's committing, uh, you know, forces in kind of a, a, a staggered uh, fashion. The primary focus right now is on Gaza City. Gaza City is the main uh, launching uh, point of, of Hamas. It is the place where it is believed most of Hamas fighters are. Uh, it is also uh, the whole of Gaza, as we've talked about, 25 miles long, about four to six miles wide, uh, is uh, is covered with uh, tunnels, anywhere to between I don't know four to five hundred miles of tunneling underneath. That is a lot for such a small piece of land. Some of those tunnels very very deep. Some of them less deep. Uh, some of them uh, more uh, built up than others. Uh, some of them uh, you could drive a car through. Some of them you can squeeze a human being through. So a wide variety of tunnels. It is uh, believed strongly that the hostages, whatever, whatever hostages are still alive, are in those tunnels. It is also uh, true that Hamas has massive stockpiles of weapons, food, oil um, uh, to, to, for generators. Uh, the tunnels are electrified. Hamas has, uh, can survive inside the tunnels for a very long time. To hell with the civilians above. Uh, that is not Hamas's concern. Hamas is not concerned about the uh, lives of uh, Muslims, of Miyamoto Muslims. It is much more concerned about jihad against, uh, against Israel. So uh, the focus, the entire focus of Hamas is on uh, their ability to kill Israelis uh, in however many uh, Palestinians have to die for it. So be it. Indeed, uh, to some extent, they're encouraging more deaths of Palestinians because they want that for their PR campaign. Anyway, Israel has, um, oh, I was going to show you a map. I, 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 I was not, <clears throat> obviously not organized today enough to, to get this map up. But um, let me see if I can show you the map. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's do it. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Yeah, there we go. All right, there's the map. Uh, so you can see, uh, let me blow it up a little bit. Uh, put it up there, go like this. There we go. So that's that's uh, mainly going northern Gaza. Uh, you can see where it says Gaza is kind of the border between southern Gaza and northern Gaza. For weeks now, the Israelis have been asking Gazans to evacuate the north and to move to the south. They basically told them uh, that, that you know, they, they will be relatively protected in the south and that most of the military activities are going to be in the north. I assume that as a consequence of that, a lot of Hamas fighters have moved to the south, and that, that's going to be a problem for the Israeli offensive uh, later on. You can see at the top of the map three arrows. Uh, those are uh, Israeli military advances, one along the coast, one kind of in the middle and the north, and one from the northeast uh, near Beit Hanun. Uh, it, it, so Israel is... is uh, uh, squeezing uh, the Gaza from the north. And then at the same time, if you look at, at the south middle, what you're seeing is uh, Israeli troops trying to completely cut off uh, the south and the north. Uh, so along, uh, there's a apparent attempt in Soko Gaza City. You see those woods there. There's a line through that. That line separates the north and the south of Gaza. Israeli troops basically have control of that line, and now, uh, slowly, as we speak, really, um, although night is falling, but I'm sure they'll be active at night, slowly moving into Gaza City uh, and slowly moving into the built-up areas. Most of this area is built up. Most of this area is, is homes, roads, alleys, very narrow alleys, very difficult to maneuver with tanks, very difficult to maneuver with uh, armed personnel carriers, uh, uh, snipers on the top, uh, you know, Hamas with anti-tank weapons and anti-, uh, anti uh, uh, you know, personal carrier weapons. Uh, and uh, so this whole area, of course, also covered with tun tunnels. So you might pass an area and then the Hamas might pop up from behind you because they might have a tunnel exit just behind you. So Israel is going to do what it can to try to destroy those tunnels try to block the exits wherever they can find them. 
Uh, they are using some of the most advanced technology in the world to find the tunnels, identify the tunnels, and then destroy the tunnels. But none of that is easy. None of that is straightforward. Uh, it is uh, it, tunnel warfare. is some of the hardest warfare one uh, can really imagine. Uh, you know, very few wars are being fought in tunnels, but Israel is going to have to fight it here uh, through tunnels. The last war that Israel thought that it would find it, uh, fight in tunnels was uh, was in Beirut in 1982, but it landed up not having to do it uh, because of Reagan. Reagan bailed out the PLO by allowing them safe passage out. Uh, Israel uh, had some experience with the tunnels in uh, in uh, Gaza from earlier wars, I think in 2014. Not very successful. Hopefully they've learned their lessons. Hopefully they have big weapons that can blow up these tunnels. Hopefully they can block them. Of course, every time they blow up a tunnel, and here, here's the interesting facet that nobody's talking about. Every time people talk about the fact that Palestinian civilians are dying when these explosions are happening, the, or Palestinian innocents are happening, what about the reality that every time these explosions are happening, it is likely that Israeli innocents are dying, that the hostages are dying. The reality is that Israel has to defend itself. Israel has to engage in warfare while knowing that its actions might very well be the actions that kill the very people that they, some of the people that they're trying to save, uh, their own citizens. And, and that is just a reality of war. I've said from the beginning, Israel has to, in order to win this, assume that those hostages are already dead and then do what they need to do in order to uh, eviscerate them. Uh, so uh, so that, is, uh, that is going on. Very little coverage about what's happening inside, partially because internet service is cut. Israel has no incentive of letting us know. Uh, but, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Hamas is not being able to generate videos. And to the extent that they do, they generate the videos of the, the poor Palestinians dying. Uh, but again, every one of those, the key thing to remember, every death, every death here, is the moral responsibility of Hamas. Uh, the, these deaths are necessary. They're inevitable. Israel has asked all civilians to evacuate. The fact that they didn't either suggests that they don't care or it suggests that Hamas didn't let them leave. And then again, the blood is on Hamas's hands. Any way you look at this, uh, Israel is not morally responsible for the deaths that it inflicts in a war of self-defense, in an area where it has warned people, told them to evacuate, and for whatever reason they have refused. So, uh, uh, but this is, this is going to be brutal so far, as far as we can tell, as of yesterday, but probably this is even more dated. 17 young Israeli kids have, have already... Uh, died in um, in uh, in this uh, attack on Gaza. Uh, ten of them uh, died when uh, their personnel carrier was destroyed and everybody inside was killed, which is an interesting phenomenon because these personnel carriers and Israeli tanks are uh, massively protected to, to protect the lives of the people inside. So again, Israel's going to have to figure out what happened uh, that was wrong there and figure out how, how the whole thing could be destroyed and everybody inside died. It's not how this is supposed to work. So that is some kind of failure, which they will have to figure out what's going on. Uh, so 17 so far young kids have died. I, I, I you know, I, if, if you can find the photos and names of all those who are being killed uh, online, it is truly tragic and horrific. And again, every one of these deaths is on Hamas and every one of these deaths just makes it more, you know, more necessary to, to destroy Hamas and, and to do as much from the air as possible so that fewer Israeli soldiers die as they enter this hellhole that is Gaza City uh, and try to do it through street by street, tunnel by tunnel fighting. Uh, the big hole that you saw, the big crater that you saw, all the networks were carrying, that happened in uh, the Jabalia camp uh, was a consequence of the fact that uh, one of these bombs had, had, had hit one of these tunnels. The tunnels had ammunitions in them. All of that imploded, uh, creating a massive crater. Yeah, many people died. There was another explosion in Jabalia camp uh, today. 
more Palestinians have died as a consequence of that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, according to some sources, at least 50 uh, Hamas fighters were killed in these explosions and a couple of senior Hamas members. Uh, if you think about the fact that there are probably 40,000 Hamas troops in Gaza overall, there's a lot more dying that's going to have to be necessary for Israel to actually fulfill its promise to eliminate and eradicate Hamas uh, uh, from Gaza. A lot of commanders still have to die. A lot of Hamas troops have to die. And uh, with them, a lot of civilians will be dying as well. That is reality. That is war. It is brutal. And, and especially sad is a lot of Israelis are going to have to die. Uh, and, uh, and that is, you know, part of uh, the price Part of the price of security, part of the price of freedom, part of the price of liberty, sadly, is that you have to fight for it sometimes. Uh, in the meantime, just more broadly, the Houthis in Yemen have indeed uh, engaged and they've been sending missiles uh, from Yemen, which is far away, uh, to try to reach uh, southern Israel. Some of those missiles are reaching and some of them are not. The ones that are reaching, the drones and the missiles that are reaching, again, far away. Uh, uh, the the uh, Israeli defense system has knocked them all down, including the first use ever of an Arrow uh, 2 uh, missile defense, uh, which knocked down a, a ballistic missile that was launched by the Houthis. The Houthis cannot launch these things and do not have any missiles without Iran. So this is clearly Iran attacking Israel. Again, nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to make the connection too explicit uh, because uh, that would require action against Iran. I, I assume and hope that at some point, maybe now, maybe in the future, Israel will launch a, a significant and dramatic uh, you know, air offensive against the Houthis in, uh, in Yemen and, and, uh, and take them out. Uh, so so that, is, uh, that is my hope. Uh, let's see... Um, Yeah, uh, at the same time, there have been just in the last 48 hours, from what I can read, 47 attacks against U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria, all launched by Iranian-affiliated organizations. Uh, I don't know casualty numbers. 27 attacks, drones, missiles, uh, artillery attacks, and uh, the U.S. is doing nothing. The U.S. is doing almost nothing uh, with regard. And then again, uh, on the northern uh, border of Israel, Hezbollah, is constantly attacking, but not on a massive scale, moderate scale, probing here and there, seeing how Israel responds. So far, Israel's responded very meekly. Uh, as I said in day two of this thing, Israel needs to launch a preemptive strike against Hezbollah and wipe as much of them out as possible, as early as possible, as quickly as possible. Don't give the strategic initiative to the Iranians and to Hezbollah. It is true, though, that Israel is now engaged in a land invasion of Gaza and all the promises of Hezbollah and the promises of Iran to fully engage with Israel when they did that have been false. They're ultimately cowards. They're afraid. They know what Israel is capable of doing to them, and they have decided uh, not to engage. So it, it might be, uh, but Israel should still take the initiative and not wait for them to decide when to engage and, uh, and how to engage. Of course, um, President Biden is calling for a pause in the fighting between Israel and Hamas. He's call calling for a ceasefire uh, so that hostages can be freed in Gaza. Uh, that is, uh, so uh, when asked in Minnesota, I guess, Minnesota, uh, uh, about, about this, he said, I think we need a pause. A pause means give time to get the prisoners out. Uh, that would be a massive mistake. Uh, Israel should uh, allow for no pause. It should uh, take advantage of whatever momentum it has, and it should work hard to, uh, to, to crush as much of Hamas. Hamas, uh, Hamas needs to be cornered, and whatever prisoners at this point are going to be released are going to be released through the efforts of the Israeli military, not through negotiating. But who knows? I would, would I be surprised if there was a pause tomorrow? No. Would I be surprised if the Israelis capitulated? To Biden's pressure? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. All right, just a few other things. Uh, you remember the Abraham Accords, the, all those the wonderful accords that the Trump administration 
got a peace between Israel and all these other Arab countries and all these other Arab countries supportive of Israel and, and, and uh, you know, just kumbaya and all one big happy family. And uh, um, anyway, maybe we'll see how all this works out. I was skeptical at the time. I'm still skeptical. Uh, these Arab countries, uh, you know, they have very narrow interests and uh, when their interests shift, they will shift. These, this is not real peace. This is not lasting peace. This is not truly a recognition of Israel's right to exist. This is, a, in a sense, by these countries, mostly, mostly a temporary ceasefire so they can extract whatever they can uh, from Israel. Anyway, Bahrain, one of the signatures to Abraham Accords, has so, uh, reportedly, I don't have confirmation for this yet, but I wouldn't be surprised at all, has reportedly expelled the Israeli ambassador while also halting its economic participation with Israel in um, opposition to Israel defending itself in the, uh, in the Gaza Strip. So these are the friends that you have. Um, also, um, it, of note, there, is, there are videos. You have to be very, very careful about videos you see online. There's a video, for example, online right now of uh, several tanks uh, with smoke plumes coming out of it. Hamas is distributing this video claiming it is several Israeli tanks having been hit. And uh, you can see some tanks moving around in the background. They look very realistic. And yet, uh, it, this, for example, one video I saw is a video game footage from the game Armor 3, uh, which is being passed off as uh, Israeli combat losses in Gaza. So be careful. I mean, the same thing was done in, uh, by the Russians in Ukraine. Uh, Hamas has a very, very sophisticated uh, cyber uh, propaganda uh, uh, operation, and uh, just be careful not to be caught up and share stuff or, or even take too seriously stuff uh, 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 that is uh, that is ultimately just video uh, game footage. Uh, there's a bunch of video game footage also in terms of uh, knocking down stuff in the sky at night and just a lot of the stuff going around.